Welcome back. You're now watching the lifestyle segment on the weekend show brought to you by Holocron Popcorn. My name is Andy Madaki. Earlier we spoke about the rising cost of living. But it's quite interesting when you see that the likes of Chicken Republic, known for Chicken Republic, is now selling goat meat, where people have moved from eating rice and meat to rice and egg, and where we've seen the cost of egg go as high as 300 naira, where everybody now needs to think of opportunity costs before they do anything in the country. The president has promised us renewed hope. We do see some work going on in some places, but how does it affect the average Nigerian? I'm going to have a conversation with some friends who will share their opinions, but I can tell you for a fact, I am feeling the difference in how things have gone. But if we've seen countries like Argentina improve with their economy, it means there may be hope for Nigeria. Joining me, I have Mukhtar Suleiman, who is a communications um, strategist and public affairs analyst. Welcome back on the weekend show, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Also joining us is a return guest, Abiola Parinde, who is a consumer behavior and marketing and brand management expert, also a marketing manager, Jabi Lakemore. Good morning and welcome back. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. You know, I'll start with you because of Jabi Lakemore, even though you're here in your capacity as an individual. Yes. One of the biggest problems which I've found with this rising cost of living is there's now the dominance of fake and substandard goods mm -hmm. in the country. In a space like Jabilek Mall, where you market the managing, what checks are being put in place to ensure that there's a level of quality assessment in different places? Uh, thank you very much. Yep, so the thing for us as a mall with community of retailers is that you don't want to be caught in the web of trying to make things work when you know that you have to stick to standard for you to be able to stand out because you don't expect people to bring their hard earned money and then you, you do, you're not giving them the right value. So what we've been able to do over time is we do constant checks and we are able to follow up with our people. We have a portal where you can report when you're not comfortable, even as little as customer service might seem to some people, if you're not comfortable, we have an, a platform where you can report to us, whatever it is. And even as management staff, we go around, we check the pulse of the shoppers who come in from time to time. And that's why even on our social media pages, once there's a request, we follow up with it. And we ensure that, because the thing is, we have an array of um, global brands who will not compromise. And even for the indigenous businesses, you stand to lose more when you compromise on quality. So we always emphasize on giving the right value, and even going above and beyond. Because the moment there is one issue, it makes everything go sour. So we are very, very careful at that, and we're pursuing that. Not even in this present economy where people, the, uh, the disposable income is now being reduced. You cannot afford to do what will anger the shoppers or the consumers generally. Talking about this economy, I went to Jabilek Mall last week to buy a beautiful table, workstation table for my work. And my brother had bought his from there. So I was like, oh, let me go and find it. And I went there, the store which used to be there that sells office equipment and whatever, gone. Um, I realized there used to be game that they've left and there's now something there. Yeah. You've seen businesses come and go. Yeah. How is the economic situation affecting um, business owners in that space? Uh, truthfully, it has been a very tough ride. Yes, businesses are staying afloat, but then the impact of the economic downturn is now being transferred to the final consumer, the shoppers. But at the end of the day, if the cost of importing goods, the cost of getting the right quality of goods into the country is being impacted by the high tariff, the forex, and you know people still want this, the best that the retailers can do is to ensure that they factor this into the final cost, which they put on the shelf. So what has happened over time, like the, some of the stores you mentioned, is that for some of them, they've had to go out to go secure their own properties mm -hmm. where they know that that can be sustainable for them in the long run because of looking at the cost of running in the malls. And then for the likes of game, you would also realize that the business has had to fold up, not just in Nigeria, but even in the greater part of Africa, just retaining, I think, in East Africa and South Africa mm. because of the uncertainties with our economic policies generally in Africa. So it's been a very tough one, but 
at the end of the day, businesses have to survive. And people who still want to go for these luxury items, quality goods, will still keep going for it because it is, to some, a necessity. And businesses have to be there to provide this for them. Mokhtar, he just used the word luxury. Luxury used to mean a Maybach to me, but it used to mean a Lamborghini and a Ferrari. Luxury now to me is yogurt. I remember when yogurt was 1,000 something for a big pack. Now, average yogurt costs, I'd say it's about 3,000 naira. Um, we've stopped going for the big names. We now go for brands that I don't even know the name. The last yogurt I bought, I don't know the name. I know there was an L and a something on it. And meat pie, that should be snack. Mm -hmm. Midpah is now 1,000, 1, 6, 1, yeah. What lifestyle changes have you experienced as a person on your own? And at this level, for those of us even being able to be here, we're the privileged ones. Before we talk about the masses, how has the last one, two years changed and how has this affected your um, economic decisions? You know, I was discussing with a few of my friends sometime, sometime last week, and we're talking about how things have changed exponentially within the last 10 years and within the last two years, as if it is the 90s and the 2000s, mm -hmm. as if it's two centuries apart, but yeah. it isn't. I remember as quite as recently as 2013, when I was still in school, in university, I could go to a, um, the market with 13,000 there, and I have shopped for the entire semester. Mm. Back as 2010, 2011, 20, like that. I could go to the market with just 13,000. And I will come back with a full Ghana must go of yeah. worth of um, food stuff with two crates of eggs, a, pack, a quarter bag of rice, a pack of spaghetti, and every single thing I would need for a whole semester. So much so that all I need to buy is just to get tomato and pepper whenever I need to prepare anything, those perishable goods. Yeah. But that's not the situation right now. Right now, in my own house, speaking for myself, I spend an average of 100,000 naira for power alone, just to keep the lights on. Because for some reason, the Minister of Power found it fit to move me from a band B to a band A, <laughs> where I am paying <laughs> about over, a two, over 200 naira per unit. Yeah. And if I buy 50,000 naira unit, I get 222 units. And that barely lasts for two weeks, just to yeah. keep the power on. This is just to keep the power on. I have an Excel sheet on my laptop. That sort of, sort of shows me my expenses down to the last five naira I spend because it has become necessary for me to keep track of my spending. Because, yeah, like because at some point I was thinking so. I was being irresponsible. I know. <laughs> but, but then you look at it and by the time I'm done with all of the necessities that, I, that, that, that needs to be in the house for the month, I notice that I don't have money for once anymore, yeah. coming down to your con con conversation around luxury. I, I see that each time, I need to, each time I'm in a supermarket and I'm getting the necessities for the house and I see something I like, I second, I think it twice. Do I really need this thing? If I don't take this thing, will I still leave? You know, that, that's where it has come, come down to the fact that we are trying to eat to keep body and soul together, mm -hmm. not to even get the extra nutrients that you need. You just need to be able to breathe mm -hmm. and walk and be functional, both mentally and physically. And that's a very sad situation, and pathetic situation, really. I think uh, from the level of the president, the president need, and his cabinet needs to understand that there's a difference between macroeconomy and microeconomy. So you cannot be looking at things from a macroeconomic lens and expect that the average Nigerian will understand. So you're telling us that, oh, you've removed forced subsidy and this is what it has translated to. That's at a macroeconomic level. Macroeconomic realities do not often translate to micro realities. How does that change the price of bread in the market? When you say we've removed forced subsidy and we are saving this amount of money. Um, we're not attracting any investors like the, like the claim that we, we, we would. The Naira has been devalued so much so that certain items that used to cost less than a thousand naira now are trying to match up with increased interest rates. Custom tariff has gone up as well over the past couple of years. I just saw that they are introducing new tax plans that will be effective from January 1st, 2025. Although some of them have tax incentive for small businesses, but even at that, if you calculate for inflation, there's a significant difference between what 25 million naira was as recently as January of 2023 and now that we are in um, October of 2024. It's, it's, it's pathetic, really. Mm. I understand that certain decisions needs to be made, but I think the president also needs to understand that for us to be able to feel the impact of what he's doing, he needs to balance it out, the macroeconomic analysis and also the microeconomic realities. And I think if you can find a way to do that, and we cannot shy away completely 100% from subsidies because there are countries who subsidize for their citizens as well. And if we want to calculate, oh, 
um, for example, I usually hear the examples that people make where they say, for example, Saudi Arabia is not subsidizing. But then look at how much is their GDP per capita. Don't calculate just one thing. Look at how much is their minimum wage and look at the entire economic realities of that particular country. You get to see that. And you look at the population in comparison to Nigeria. So we can't use, we can't compare apples with oranges. We have to compare like with likes. And I think the president and his cabinet needs to learn more about that and then find better ways to sort out the economy. Let's talk about the average man now. Now we've spoken mm -hmm. about us and our reality. Um, yesterday I was driving and you know how life be life in. And yeah. all of a sudden someone was like, oh, your tire is going down. And I stopped somewhere. I was like, oh, can you fix it? Check if it has a leak. And they came and they were like, oh, we saw two leaks. Two nails had pierced Whoa. into your tire. And I was like, can you fix it? And they did. And they told me for the patch, it cost me 5,000 naira. And I had asked that before to patch a tire was maybe 250, and I'll give 500 naira because yeah. I know this is labor. And, and before they'll charge you per tire, and now they're saying per patch and whatever. And so each costs two five. So stuff which ideally would have cost me 1,000 naira in the past is now costing me times five, so an extra 4,000. And it was one thing for me to negotiate with them because I was like, I'm literally working for this money as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's not like I have so much somewhere. But you now see the fact that everybody, I don't know if it's because of the poverty and hunger, everybody is now trying to, like young people say, run everybody's streets. <laughs> everybody is now inflating their prices so high. What do you think is going on? I think, I think while there is some level of... Um, like, I don't call it incompetence, but for lack of better terms, right, there's some level of incompetence at the government level in handling the, mat the issues. There's also the level of greed from the people. I'm, I must admit on that. So you get to say you want to go and buy Gary, and they'll tell you Gary is now 2,500. Why? Dollar has gone up. Mm -hmm. huh? It makes no sense. I've seen the way Gary is brewed locally. It does not, there's no way the dollar is influencing that, yeah. especially in the communities where these things are done. Yeah. So. It still comes back down to how the government can control the free trade area for us to be able to have access to goods and services at the prices that they are supposed to be for. But then again, on the flip side of it, how can the government control the free trade area when, one, manufacturers have to produce primary source of power for themselves? Mm. They are buying foil at premium price. They are providing security for themselves. I have a friend who mills rice in Gombe. And he was telling me some time ago that they pay 20 million naira every month to a power staff to ensure that they can get 16 hours of power to power the meal. Since when the price for diesel went up. So it, become, it became unsustainable for them to um, keep powering their diesel. So they needed power supply. So for them, not 24 hours later, for them to get 16 hour light to power their meal, their milling machine. They are paying 20 million naira every month. Tell me why the price of rice won't be 90 something naira. So if the president needs to, the government needs to know that there is a part, there's there's a cause and effect to most of these things. And if you can address the cause, the causal part of it, the effects become very easy for us to manage. So coming back to that conversation about why the greed is very high, is because we do not see anywhere the government is helping any one of us. Some I, I heard somebody said, even if Tinibu is not in the villa. Uh, he will still continue living life. Even if there's nobody there in the villa, they will still continue. I mean, the man has gone on leave, for the love of God. <laughs> <What> to, <laughs> he has taken a two-week leave, yeah. and there's not a need to rest. But then, it, it makes me wonder how you are able to sleep well at night when there's this much mayhem going on in the country. Uh, I, 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 put, I, I, I put some, um, there are some people who I train um, to go to school, and one of them, I just recently enrolled him in the Federal Government College in Kwali. And for me to be able to put him in school, like I said, I have an Excel sheet in my, in my laptop that calculates everything. I spent an average of 625,000 there by the end. This is excluding the foil I had to spend going mm. up and down, taking him to the school and everything. And this is because I also went above and beyond a little bit. Because Can school sure. fees in the Federal Government College now is at least 100,000 there. I know, I saw yeah. that. So paying for that, paying for other things that I need, buying provisions, mm. buying uniforms, buying textbooks, everything. Everything amounted to, and this is excluding the pocket money as well, amounted to about 625,000 naira. Now, I know I did extra, but then when the day I dropped him off at school, I saw other parents. And I know that no matter how prudent they were with their money, they ought to have spent nothing less than 250,000 naira 
to put their word in school. It breaks my heart, really, to see that the people are having to leave these economic realities without having the, in the income coming in to match it. Um, quite recently, on the October 1st, on the day of October 1st, I granted an interview to one of your sister stations, and, I, and they, they had a phone-in program, a TV station, yeah. and they had a phone-in, and somebody called, and the man just started crying. He said, what are they telling him? That he's lying down on his chair right now, mm. and he's thinking, his wife is looking at him, he, he knows that in his wife's head, he's asking, she's asking him, even without using words, what are they going to eat? He doesn't know. And he sat, he just, he just broke down on air and started crying. That's a grown man. It, it tells a lot about the economic realities of all of us. Why it, imagine we still have, for some of us now, maybe those of us seated here, we still have monthly income trooping in. Imagine those who don't. Imagine small businesses that would have to fold up because people stopped patronizing because they became luxury goods. Yeah. Because now it is no, uh, instead of me eating a well-garnished fried rice, I want to just <laughs> eat rice and oil, at least just something that keeps the body and soul together. So I think th th these are the realities. I, ha I have friends who have worked in the, in the villa, and when you hear them talk sometimes, I usually tell them, I, think, I, I say, I think your, re your economic reality is different from mine. Yeah, and it's, it's unfortunate that you don't, you, you're not testing the pulse of the, of the people. The, the Senate president, for example, does not, know how much he spends on diesel for his house. He doesn't know how much he spends on fuel in a month. Only he wakes up in the morning, there's, an, there's a continue. He doesn't, I'm, I doubt that he knows the precise figure of his salary mm. at the end of the month. <laughs> and because they don't understand these things, that is why they don't get how bad it is. Like, for example, I was watching an interview quite recently that uh, Michelle Obama granted. And she was saying in the interview that in the White House, the food that they eat, it comes from the president's salary. Yes. Yeah. If they go and leave, the vacation is paid from, from the president's salary. Mm. So if they, if, they, if they need to do anything for themselves, so that, that way they get to understand, oh, rice is now 95,000. You know, when you calculate that vis-a-vis -vis your actual um, pay, you begin to understand that ah, we need to do more about food stamps, we need to do yeah. more about this, because it's also touching me. Yeah. I've, never seen a, I've never seen a plenary session where any of the senators would say, ah, I could not get four yesterday because of four cues. So because that reality does not touch them, they don't get to understand what we, all of us are going You're through. Talking about reality and random exercise, how many of you here still actively eat three square meals a day? <laughs> None of us, and I'm sure everybody in the studio. I can't remember when last that I've said I should have breakfast, lunch, lunch and dinner. dinner. People now eat when they're hungry. Yep. Keep the well, well, no more in between. <laughs> no more in between. Yeah. It's now like our weather that has been raining from January. And another problem with that is that even when you want to eat, the quality of meals right now, everybody is just going for the barest minimum. Yeah. That the cost of food has gone really high if you are buying. Out. Because in some cases, there's a time on this show we're debating if Eating out is now cheaper than cooking for yourself. Yes. Do you understand? And even eating out now, you're not enjoying the meal because it's just... Yeah, the value. For body and soul. And then for everyone here, I'm sure every day you wake up, black tax, the amount of people sending you text message, I Whoa. need money for this, Whoa. or whatever. I'll let you speak about that, Abiola, and how to navigate. I think the reality is that, like um, my brother did mention, is there's a big disconnect between the people and the people governing the people. Mm. And I think that has led us on this downward um, descent where the people just keep complaining and then the people at the top just feel like, why are they complaining? Because they don't feel what we're going through. Imagine when you have to work and then you have quite a lot of people who are dependent on you to be able to take care of them. You have aged parents. So imagine what you used to give to them Okay, so for example, I'll take myself. So before all of these issues, I had a steady amount that I sent to my father, my mother, and then myself and my wife, to our, you know, to our parents. And then one day I just asked myself, like, this money, will it be able to even help take them to the market? Mm. Even though we're in the north, okay, where the assumption is that you can easily get food stuff around in the north. But with all the issues we have with insecurity, farmers can no longer go to the market. So everybody is trying to exploit each other at the marketplace. And then you're, we're not all, everyone has become price sensitive. 
and you're saying to yourself, do I need to get this? Do we really need to have a crate of egg at this point in time? Or should we just go for what is the alternative source of protein and all of that? And then you now ask yourself, if you are struggling with this thought as a man or as a person who is working, what happens to people who don't even have jobs? Those who are dependent on you, do you even have enough for you to say, oh, let me take out of what I have to be able to share with my close relatives. So it's become a very, very tough one. I was speaking to a friend who went to the market or during the week, and then I just saw a message like, man, this is not nice. Then the lamentation was like, I could feel the pain because I've heard quite a lot of people. And if it's someone who is earning this much can be complaining, you know, because of the back to school, I try to get things for the kids. And I'm like, maybe what we need to do now is to double our hustle. And then start thinking of, what other source of income can I get so that there is so much coming in? That's so much, not so much as in the way the politicians gather, but so much that you can take care of yourself and also help the people around you. So I think for us, first, we have to be very conscious at this point in time. The quality that we seek, what are the alternatives? If I have to get stuff, what is the substitute that also gives me the same value? And then we have to be very cautious of even how we spend and manage that's a good place to leave it. I'll let Mukhtar have final words because putting this into perspective, um, spending 600k to get a child to school, let's say average is 250. Minimum wage they now claim is 70,000 naira, which hasn't been implemented. But they've also stated that a household is a minimum of four people, which means there's the father and mother and potentially two kids and there's most likely a help or whatever. How is this helping people? And then you wonder why in the civil service and the like, everybody's trying to cut corners. But Nigerians are saying, we see you spending hundreds of millions on renovating the vice president's residence. We see you spending hundreds of millions on X, Y, Z. Recently, the government's palliatives give out rice. But you're selling this rice to civil servants at about 40,000 naira, which is good. Some of them are now going to stash it till December or whatever. But beyond the civil servant, there's a level below. Yep. We now have the middle class, which has now di disappeared, but yeah. there's still a class below that, that don't even have access to that to even buy it. But you've given some solutions, like we need to double our hustle and stick to what we need. He had started by saying he has an Excel sheet tracking all that he's spending. When I see how much I've spent in the month of Sept the last month, September, I want to cry because <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> where is this? Outflow. And so once in a while, I deliberately have to just buy something for myself so that I can see it and I can, at least I remember this. But give us like two more tips before we close on what people can do to manage this because I don't see a miracle happening within uh, the next one year. There, there really isn't much of anything that can, like I said, there's a cause and effect for most of these things. And it is one thing for the government to be telling us to adjust our style of living because the hardships are necessary for better times. Mm -hmm. And it's another thing for us to be seeing them living la vida loca. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, and, um, it's, it, and the government has found a way to create this authorization of realities that sort of draws a line of a we versus them. So the government versus the people, or the people versus yeah. the government, that makes it look like these issues that undercut our very realities only affect a certain group of people. And that is why the Senate president had the effrontery to say, while they are outside protesting, we'll be inside eating. That makes no sense. So I think the government needs to really, really look inwards and find better ways of handling these things in a way that looks more realistic and in a way that we can relate to. Nigerians are not horrible people yeah. in a very, to a very large extent. We're very patriotic. If you look at how we band together during football and other sports, mm. or even Twitter Music, banter, you get to see movies, that we, are, we are all together. But the politics angle of things are really bad. And it's very sad to note that the real meaningful change that affect uh, lives are made from positions that have political processes in them. So if the political processes are horrible, people don't trust okay. the system. Yeah. Thank you so much, gentlemen. You've really addressed this and treated it well. Um, we can literally only hope for the best. I hope things get better. Well, yeah, thank you, Mukhtar. Sure. Thank you, Abiola, for thank joining for us. And dear Nigerian government, you need to fix up your act. It's, it's as simple as that. While the people do what they can do, Nigerians are very resilient. Talking about residents, every Saturday morning when I come here, I have this tradition of stopping and buying this roadside upper, which I like with egg. <laughs> but I've seen it go within the last five years from 150 naira to 500 naira now. And this is what we, this yeah, street food and whatever. But